Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth lesson of our online course on online teaching. Uh, this lesson is going to be about tools that you can use to complement your lessons and here with us is Hannah Young uh, who's going to talk with us about Canva and Adobe Spark. So Hannah, thank you for being here with us and you have the floor. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited today to show you some things that really work well for me um, and have helped me move my teaching online um, in an emergency. So I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and share my screen now, if that's okay, and show you where I'm up to here. So, mm -mm. okay. So we'll go into uh, Canva. Now Canva is a, a free um, um, portal for you to use online. All you need is a, a Wi-Fi connection and it enables you to produce things that, are, uh, that a graphic designer would produce, but you don't need any technical skill at all. And I use Canva every single day and I can't believe it's free. Uh, you can buy a paid version um, and I do have that as well, but I managed for, for years without the paid version and you can do so much without paying for this at all. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is um, how uh, I might uh, try and figure out if my students have understood uh, a piece of text. So say for example I'm teaching something like socialism and I want uh, my pupils to read um, a piece of text that identifies the difference between uh, evolutionary socialism and revolutionary socialism. So instead of getting them to write an essay or answer comprehension questions, I can just go into Canva and select something like magazine cover and you can see here there are so many options and I'm going to demonstrate to you how you could um, get your pupils to use this. All you needed to do would be to um, select this um, uh, address here and send it to them so that they could then access or choose a different type of um, uh, magazine cover. So say for example I'm going to say right so I want you to design a um, magazine cover um, to show me that you've understood the text that I've, I've given you. So I'm just going to change the colour, um, make it smaller, it's too small. Uh, okay and of course this, this woman doesn't really represent uh, socialism <laughs> at all in fact and so I've already uploaded some images and it's really easy to drag and drop images into Adobe Spark um, to help you here. So I've got this picture ready of Karl Marx and I'll just hover over and here he appears and then I want perhaps a um, uh, the vo voice of the proletariat and then just like you would have on a magazine cover but I'm going to make this relevant to the task that I might have set so uh, understanding that democratic socialism is about oops, evolution not revolution and then I might have here Marx Marx and Engels and then I might have uh, a comment here to show I've understood that without revolution, there can be no socialism. Now you can see that's a really um, simple task there um, that a pupil could do and you could identify straight away whether they've understood those two concepts in the most basic terms. Um, and it's and actually the, the end visual result is really quite nice. And then maybe when we all get back to school, um, we can put these on our walls perhaps. Um, but it also enables a pupil to then feel like they've accomplished something that's quite nice. It's aesthetically quite pleasing, but it also um, solves a, a, a learning and teaching issue here where you can just quickly identify whether they've understood um, what you've asked them to do. And what's quite good about this is that they don't need to print anything out and then take a photograph of it and then upload it or attach it to an email. They can um, um, come here, I'm just going to move this here. They can download it as a, a, an image file, a PDF if they want to, um, but they can also share it as a link. So there's no need for downloading at all. Um, and if you have a Twitter page that you, uh, you run for your, your subject or your school, they can share it to the Twitter page um, if you have those permissions set up. And it's just a really nice, quick project. And 
I think that a lot of my colleagues are finding that they're, they're trying to assess hundreds of pieces of work each week and doing something more visual can be a bit of a, just a break in, in some of the tasks that are being set. Because I think some pupils are finding um, the amount of written work or typed work they're having to do um, quite onerous and they find it difficult to manage their time. Um, but something like this is quite quick and quite nice to do, I think. Um, so that is the first task I wanted to show you, okay. Now, when we use Canva, there are so many things that a teacher could use here. I mean, whatever you can think of, I, I expect is here. Now, I use a lot of um, um, the, the uh, projects here for myself. So I might use a, a, a lesson plan or um, I might plan out the, the homework I'm going to set in the, each week. It could be a meal plan, so it could be personal to yourself. Um, there are also things like, um, mind maps as well um which uh, i mean they, and you can edit all of these uh, and pupils can edit all of these they, they requires no um technical skill at all all you're really doing is editing what will become a pdf or a um, an image file um so if you download them as image files then you can add them into powerpoint presentations as well if you wanted to um that that's easy to do but the second um, task I'm going to show you today is one that relates to infographics. Now, I like infographics a lot, and um, I've used these with my more senior pupils, but they work with any age of, pu of pupil. So if I type infographic into Canva, you can see there are so many different options here. And what I might do is, say I, I select this one, I might give a Again, a piece of text. Um, it might be a, a chapter from um, a, a, a book about the what I'm going to demonstrate now is a book about Stalin's purges. So I might ask my pupils to pick out, um, let's see, six different quotations that they feel summarize um, uh, the author's viewpoints, or it might be to select some values and limitations of this as a source, um, or it might be just um, pick out six points about that the author talks about so i might put something like um here i might ask the pupils to um have a look at the work of sheila fitzpatrick um that the well-known historian and i might say well you you read this and pick out some of the main themes so they might pick out something about um how she writes about stalin's team um and you can obviously move all of these things here she might, um, she does write about the issue of purging from below. And they could just write a quotation then that they extracted from the text. And you can make these um, larger, um, so you can see, or you can just, um, like, so you're not working in a tiny screen, you can work in a bigger screen should you wish. And then you can just type directly into that. You can change the color, of course, um, and uh, to whatever suits you. And again, the downloading, the sharing is, is really easy to do. Um, and again, a really quick way to understand whether your pupils have actually understood what you've asked them to do. So that, that's the infographics there. Now, the, the third task is a really, um, I think it's a quite fun task um, to do. And it breaks up some of the... Um, the writing and research perhaps pupils are doing at this time at home. So if I pick, um, I've typed into Canva ID. Okay, so say I'm going to choose, let's pick one, the one I wanted isn't here. Let's see. Okay, um, oh, where is the one I wanted? All right, I will, just, I will just select one. There's too much choice, that's the problem. That is the problem. Um, so here we go, I'll just pick this one here. So say you're studying um, the Tudors and you want them to come up with an ID card with a, a really brief um, idea about the person that they're studying. So I've already uploaded an image of Henry VIII here and I'm going to just drop that in here and then move it down, change the name. 
and then I'm going to give him a, a job title. Now I could have put serial killer there, but that's probably not appropriate. But you see what I mean? You can do this for so many different, you know, figures, historical figures. And actually the kids actually quite enjoy it because it, it can be quite funny um, or very serious. Um, and there, there's no end to this little task here. And again, they could just um, download that or upload it to, to Twitter or a Facebook page if you have that um, as well, um, or share the link. And if you're working on some kind of platform like Office 365, Google Classrooms, um, Moodle, Firefly, whatever platform you're on, you can use this and you can drop this into any of those platforms um, really easily. And you can see how quickly I did that there. Um, I'm sure pupils who've got far better IT skills than me um, could do that even faster. And it's actually quite enjoyable again. Um, and again, it just shows you that the pupil has perhaps understood um, the task. So, um, I, there, I'm again, as I said, there's so many things you can do on here. Um, and other things you could do are things like um, design a propaganda poster. Um, you could create um, an invitation. You can see all of these things are um, here. So you can see that you could um, you can do uh, what can become a PowerPoint presentation. Um, you can make animated presentations also. You could do a resume um, for, I started making one here, I'll just show you, it's not finished yet, uh, a resume for Trotsky. So he wants to apply to be Lenin's successor. Um, and then, um, let's see, I haven't edited these. So I started um, writing down what his skills might be and what his work experience might be. Perhaps we could write something about how he led the, the Red Army in the Civil War. And you can see I've added in little images here. So you can add in elements to these images. So if you just type in, like I did USSR, um, this is a paid one here, but there are other things you can include and then just drop them in, resize them, etc. So just a nice little task. And again, the resume could be used for so many different historical figures to identify um, their backgrounds, their hopes, their, their vision, um, and, and, and their experience, um, whether that be po political, military, anything like that. Um, there are also things you can do like design um, uh, tickets um, here. So you could design a ticket to um, a beer hall event in Munich, perhaps in the 1920s. Um, it could be anything like that, a, a flyer, um, you can do book covers, you can even design t-shirts um, but that that's what I do a lot of in um, Canva and I also design all of my teaching materials in Canva as well um, a lot of my um, front covers to my teaching materials I make in Canva um, and I, I feel that that works well and pupils I, I think they think I've got better design skills than I actually do have they are just um, they're all done in Canva I've been exposed as someone that's <laughs> doesn't do it themselves but I don't need to because it's all done for you here so this is really the teacher's friend this this app here so I also I'm going to show you today how I make video lessons using Canva and Adobe Spark and I'm going to take you through how um, step by step how I make a really short video um, and uh, and hopefully this will help you move your online teaching um, onto your platform um, this making recorded videos is really helpful, especially if you have pupils that live in different time zones to you as I do, or they don't have um, access to a computer at the same time as the lesson is running. So this then works so then nobody then feels like they are not being able to access the material, access the lesson, so they don't feel isolated because if you're creating a, a video that's recorded, they can play it when they can, when their Wi-Fi is stable, when they can get access to a computer, and um, they can play it, stop it, if they don't understand um, what you've been talking about, which is what you can do with this video as well, if there's anything you don't understand that I'm talking about too. So staying in Canva then, I'm going to open or oh, select animated presentation. Okay, so I'll just close these tabs here. Right. So there is so much choice and you can see these are like videos within what can be a very much longer video. So I'm going to select one of these slides and you should see these slides as almost like a, a, 
a shot in a video as if the video is like um, a storyboard. Um, so let's go down and just show you some of the brilliant things here. And of course, you can change any of the images and of course the words as well. So let's try and make a short video now. Um, and you can see the animation here. Um, let's make one on um, the causes of the, the Cold War. Okay, so let's make that smaller. Okay, and a bit smaller again. All right. Now we need to move this across. History there. And the topic of this one's going to be oops, the space race. Okay, then I'm going to move this back. Actually, I'm going to move this across. A little bit smaller. And then move this back across. Okay, so that could be the, the beginning of a video. Now you can make a whole video in Canva. You can't talk over it, so you can't narrate over it. I expect Canva will, will bring that functionality in at some point. So what we need to do is we need to then take our videos that we're making in Canva and put them into video editing software. So what I'll do is while I, um, before I take us into Adobe Spark, I'm now going to download that and I'm gonna download it as an MP4 file. Okay, so uh, just download. Now, while that's downloading, um, I need to think about what I will do for our second section of the, um, the video. So I'm going to move off animated presentation. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into uh, the home page of Canva and I'm going to search video because what I want now is a video that um, a blank video so I'm going to select one from Canva's big library of videos so select video and I want a picture of um, an astronaut now some of these um, are paid versions and some are not so I'll pick one that is free okay and when it processes, um, you'll be able to see what the video is. So um, it lasts for 27 seconds. And that, that will be enough for us, I think. Let's see what that video looks like. It can take a while to process. Well, a few seconds anyway. Okay. So that's, that's quite nice. Not sure if it's entirely historically accurate, but you get the idea. Okay. Right, so I'm just gonna stop that. Okay, and then I'm going to download it again. So I'll download it as a video. And then while that's downloading, I'm now going to move to Adobe Spark. Now this is um, another free platform. Um, you can pay for an upgrade, but it's not, it's not necessary at all. The videos can be about 30 minutes in length um, and each um, screen of the video, each sort of storyboard of the video is 30 seconds long. So I'm going to show you how that works now. So if I click create a project and then click video. And let's call it space race. Now I'm, I make all of my videos in Adobe Spark. Um, and I feel that this has worked well um, for, for, I mean, it can be used for any, any subject or any kind of communication. It works so well. Um, so, right, I'm ready. Now I have a stamp on there, which I'm going to take off and I don't need the credits. Right, so on the bottom, you can see that these are the screens of the video. These are the, Almost like view this as a storyboard of the story you're trying to tell or the lesson you're trying to convey. So this is going to be, this is our first screen. So I'm just going to drop this in here. Okay. And I want it to last, say, five seconds. And I'm going to save it.
Now, what's quite good about Adobe Spark is that you can narrate over the top of this, and it's so simple to do. Now, I use, um, I'm going to show you the microphone I use. Uh, I've got it already up on Amazon. I use this one, and I find that the, the, the sound quality is really good. And I have one of these um, arms here and one of these things here to stop, um, well, to help with the sound quality. Um, so that's what I'm using right now. Um, so I'm now going to record something over the top. So I'll just show you how to do that. So I'll say something like, and what I do is I press down the red button. Hello, and welcome to lesson one on the space race. Okay, so that would be my introduction. And I want that to be the first one. You can see you can move these around. Now, my second um, story or part of the video is going to be the one with the um, Ast or the space video. So, well, we don't need 26 seconds. Um, 13 will do. Okay. So, the longer the video clip is, the longer it takes to save. Okay, and then screen three, I'm going to um, just do something a little bit different. So I don't want a video here or any animation. I'm just gonna change the theme to Grace. I use this one quite a lot. And I'm gonna have a look at the layout and change the layout. So um, I'm gonna put um, a caption in here. And the caption I want is um, something like, all right, we can put anything in here. Um, so say we write something like that and we can increase the size of the text and change it maybe to full screen. No, we'll keep it as caption. Right, and I could put a picture behind that and if I want to do that, I can click photo and I can find some free photographs. And um, if I just do that and maybe I put this in here. Um, so I'm just going to click on the image I want and then you can see it appears here. And what's quite good is that because um, we're using uh, images from the internet, Adobe Spark automatically references them, um, which is really good for academic integrity. Um, and you can see here that that image has already been credited at the end, um, which is a, a nice way to recognize the, um, the owner of that photograph, even though it is a, a photograph that can be used um, freely without and doesn't have any um, license added to it. So let's see, does that work? Maybe make it smaller. All right. Now you can add music to this, but I haven't found a way to have music on and then turn it off. So if you don't have, if you don't turn this off, the music will be on top. So it's always good to turn the music off. So we've got, that's our first slide there. Then we've got this one. And I'm now gonna narrate something over this. So I might say, um, the space race was a 20th century competition between two Cold War rivals, the Soviet Union or USSR and the United States. All right. And then we'll have this one. And then at the end, you might want to say your name or your school's name. And if you want it to be longer, you just click this section here and you drag it for as long as you want it. 30 seconds you'll see is the maximum per slide, but we don't need it that long. So you just keep adding and adding up to 30 minutes. So in my experience, that can be, yeah, that is, you know, around, it depends on how, how long each slide is, but it can be around like 35 slides. That, that tends to be um, uh, the, the length I, I go for if I'm doing a, a quite an involved lesson. So once you've done that, you can preview it, um, which we should probably do now. Let's just see what it's like. Um, and so if we just go preview. Hello, and welcome to lesson one on the space race. 
The space race was a 20th century competition between two Cold War rivals, the Soviet Union or USSR and the United States. Okay, and there you have it. So, of course, you would do something in much more depth and more historically accurate, but that you can see that it's really pretty simple to do this. And again, what you can do is you can download it as an MP4 file and then upload that to your, your, your sharing platform, or you can share it. So if you don't have a platform that your school is using um, or you're unable to do that, you can um, publish it or you can invite people to view it. So say I'm going to just publish it. So I might pick my title. I'll pick that it's an educational video. My, my name, you don't have to. You don't have to have it featured on the website. And then what happens then is you can create the link. And then your video then is hosted and stored in the Adobe Spark cloud, presumably. Um, and then um, it means that you're not having to um, store a huge um, video um, anywhere. Um, and that can work, um, especially for people that don't have sharing platforms. You can use Adobe Spark to share it for you. And when this link pops up, I'll show you what else you can do with that link. Okay, so there's the link. You can then share it via these social media platforms, Google Classroom, email, you can embed it, um, or just put a shareable link wherever you, you need to. Um, and, and that's how I make all of my videos. Um, they can take a long time to do. My first video that I made was 15 minutes long, but it took me about three hours to make. So what I've done is I've you know, reduced everything that I've learned, all the mistakes I've made into this short video today for you, just to show you um, how simple it actually is. I made lots of mistakes before I got, I got to this point. Um, now I do make uh, lots of videos um, for history and politics and I host uh, a number of them on my website um, and I'll just show you that now. So this is my website historysuccessguides.com and just on the home page you can see some of my videos that I've used, uh, I've made, sorry, using all of the things that I've shown you today um, and you can play them, use them if they suit your needs um, and let's have a look. This is, this is one I made. Well, I've made them all in Canva and Adobe Spark. Um, and if anyone wants to um, have a look at these, you're very welcome um, to do so. Or if you want to um, get in touch with me, um, if you want me to explain anything in more detail um, or have any questions, you can just get in touch with me via the chat icon here um, if you would like to. I do have a couple of questions just to, to clarify. Um, how do you give students the task? Do you send them the link uh, and it is already partial, the, the Canva is already partially filled in or do they have complete blank, sh short blank to go on? Well, so what, what you can do is um, they, they would need to sign up for a Canva account, but that's, um, it's, it's obviously free. So it's just a platform. Um, and then if, you, if they have the account and you share the web link to the infographic or the poster, or you say to them, you present your work in, in your chosen way, be it a magazine cover or a presentation, it doesn't matter. Um, and as long as they've got the account, you just send them the link and they'll get straight there. Well, that sounds amazing. And um, in the past lessons, we talked a little bit about scaffolding and the fact that some students have different um, or desire to challenge themselves to different levels. Has it ever happened to you to send maybe, I don't know, to some students the infographic and to some students the magazine cover and to ask them to choose what they wanted to do depending on their ability? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, and pupil voice and pupil choice are really important things in education. And I think if a student in these really uncertain times now, if they don't feel comfortable doing a task, it can easily be a way for them to just say, well, I'm not doing it at all. So I think any kind of opportunity to give options should be taken, um, um, especially in these uncertain times. We don't wanna make this a stressful situation for any people at all, but hopefully you can see that from the Canva um, uh, tasks, you can see that they, they shouldn't be onerous for, for 
any pupil, even somebody with the most basic word processing skills. I mean, Canva's even got spell check in it. So there, there's so many um, ways to, to scaffold, even in with, within Canva, not even with me scaffolding them, but Canva almost does it for them. Absolutely. It, sound, it sounds brilliant. I'm, I'm so happy you decided to show it to us. And yeah, congratulations with the videos. I, I'm sure some of the participants to this course will definitely have a look at your website. And yeah, it was great having you here. Thank you very, very much. Oh, thank you. I've enjoyed it. And thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it.